As millions of Americans wait for their tax refunds with the April 18th filing deadline now behind us this year, significant changes in staffing and funding at the IRS have started taking effect. Our next guest says that's good news for those who follow the tax laws, bad news for those trying to cut corners. Former Treasury official, Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner is at the big wall with his charts. Steve, the, um, the funding has revived IRS staffing and also enforcement. So explain what that means. Sure, Mika. Well, look, today is a particularly good day to celebrate an important achievement of the Biden administration, which is to, in effect, reform, revitalize, whatever you want to call it, the IRS. So let's take a look at some of the numbers. What you see here is IRS staffing going back to 1992, and it has been going all the way down from almost 120,000 staff members down here into the 70,000 range. And that really was the Republicans kind of trying to starve the beast. If you cut off funding and staffing for the IRS, perhaps people cannot pay their taxes as religiously. And in fact, that's what's happened, as I'll show you in a second. But this has all changed. It changed a bit with the CARES Act, pushed through by Democrats, which increased funding for the IRS. And then $80 billion in the IRA is going to take staffing all the way back up to here, not all the way back to where it was, but a big, big positive boost. So why is the cut in staffing so important? Because here's what happened to the chances of an American getting audited. If you had over $10 million of adjusted gross income back in 2010, you had over a 20% chance of getting audited. That drop, 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 and now you're down here under 5% uh, for 2019, the most recent year that we have audit statistics for of the percentage of people getting audited. So all, not all that staff, that staff's going to go do a bunch of things, but a lot of it is going to be to fix this problem and get Americans to pay their fair share as the president has been promising. And Steve, some of that funding as we moved to your second chart went to hiring new staff. We heard about the 87,000 new people being hired at the IRS and contrary to some of the claims we heard from prominent Republican senators, these were not people coming to knock on your door with AR-15s, they were mostly people manning computers and answering phones. Yeah, that's exactly right, Willie. And to your point about answering phones and so forth, look at this. this so this uh, uses a lot of the money that CARES put in place, and it'll get better, even better, as the Biden money comes into place. But if you look here, you'll see that just last year, one year ago, if you called the IRS, you had maybe a 15 percent chance of getting your call answered. In 2023, the tax season that just ended a week or so ago, that number went up to almost 90 percent. And then similar to that, in two, last year, if you, got, if you got through to the IRS, you got put on hold, you, got, you, had, you waited for 27 minutes on average to get your call answered. And today, you're waiting less than five minutes to get your call answered. So they hired 5,000 people uh, using CARES Act money to improve the service, and this is what you're getting, and it's going to get better as they continue to hire more of those 87,000 people who are not carrying AR-15s, as you said. Yeah, and that's good news just for regular people mm. trying to get their tax refund, for example, that previously was taking a long, long time. Let's move to your third chart, Steve, where you say IRS funding is shrinking the deficit and going after the tax gap. How's it doing that? So when people don't get audited, they tend to start to cut corners. I'm not saying they're tax of ev evaders, but I think you could call them tax avoiders, not necessarily paying every penny of tax that under the rules they should pay. And there have been estimates done on this. Treasury did an estimate in 2016 using numbers from 2014 to 2016. And what they found was that Americans paid a an average each of those years of $2.8 trillion in individual income taxes. The IRS collected $68 billion through its audit process and getting people to pay what they owe. But there's another $428 billion a year that the IRS was not collecting because it didn't have the staff basically to enforce its rules. So as that happens, here's what the Congressional Budget Office estimate thinks is going to happen. The pink down here is the additional $80 billion of funding that Biden has, uh, and Congress are providing to the IRS. All this green are the extra revenues that they project they will collect between now and 2031, about $177 billion of extra revenues, which gives you a net cumulative of $100 billion of deficit reduction over, the, over this period of time, between now and 2031. 
And so not only are we going to get, hopefully, people to pay their fair share of taxes, we're going to make a, a, a noticeable dent in the budget deficit, which we all know is a huge problem that needs to be addressed. Some so it is a win-win yeah. for everybody, except people who are trying not to pay what they really owe to the IRS. Yeah, some important numbers in there, perhaps the most important of all, though, Steve, to your second chart, four-minute hold times we're down mm. to with the IRS. You can only take so much of that music. That's some good news. Former Treasury official, Morning Joe economic analyst, Steve Ratner. Steve, thanks so much. Still